this be one of the best moments of your life. You're listening to the Business Mirror Podcast for a broader look on business with Senior Editor Dennis Estopase. Good day, I'm Dennis Estopase and welcome to Wednesdays with John Mangan, a podcast to be anchored by John Mangan, a columnist for the Business Mirror newspaper and who operates a website titled mangononmarkets.com. Mr. Mangon will share with us one of the many pieces he wrote for his column titled Outside the Box, which is published every Tuesday and Thursday in the op-ed section of the Business Mirror. We hope you enjoy your Wednesday with John Mangon. On its maiden voyage, the RMS Titanic hit an iceberg and sank on April 15, 1912. Of the estimated 2,224 passengers and crew, more than 1,500 people died. The ship was sailing far north, farther north at a higher speed than would have been normal, maybe to break the transatlantic speed record. Warnings from other vessels of iceberg in the area may have been ignored. The ship only carried enough lifeboats to accommodate about half the people on board. There's some study, one study says that substandard rivets joining the ship's plates may have been used in the welding process. The Titanic did have a double bottom, but not a double hull that is common today. And had the watertight compartments been expended, extended the length of the ship, the hell breach might have been contained. But all of that is the how of the sinking and not the why. The reason the Titanic went down because the ship was unsinkable. Years before the actual voyage, the Titanic's captain, E.J. Smith, who went down with his ship, said, quote, I cannot imagine any condition which would cause a ship to founder. Modern shipbuilding has gone beyond that, unquote. One British newspaper on the day the Titanic left on its voyage wrote, quote, this, undense, this undemonstratively was born the, the, the most marvelous creature yet conceived by the art of naval architecture and the science of marine engineering. There's a story that kind of sums up the situation. An unknown Titanic crew member is reported to have said to a passenger, Mrs. Sylvia Caldwell, quote, God himself could not sink this ship, unquote. Back in the late 1970s, I spent three months reading the New York newspapers to try to understand the stock market crash of October 1929. I wanted to see if there was any clue, any comment that we could, could look back on that might have foretold the future. There wasn't. Everything seemed normal. It wasn't. And like Titanic's Captain Smith, Yale economist Irving Fisher said nine days before the crash, quote, stock prices have reached what looks like a permanently high plateau, unquote. But like all good economists, Fisher did not go down with a ship. He wrote books and became a strong advocate of vegetarianism and alcohol prohibition. In July 2005, the chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors and future Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke said, quote, we've never had a decline in house prices on a nationwide basis, unquote. Two months before the government mortgage lenders Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac collapsed, he predicted, quote, they will make it through the storm. And on August 2, 2010, he said, the financial crisis appears to be mostly behind us and the economy seems to have stabilized and is growing again. Here's the reality. Ships sink and market bubbles burst when everybody thinks they cannot. You and I make life and death decisions nearly every day. I've lived almost 25,000 of those days and never once did I stop my car on a railroad track or make a wrong turn into Manila Bay. When you know the risks, you can adjust and prepare for them. 
The point is that regardless of all the facts that prove the sovereign debt, stock, real estate, commodity, take your choice. All of these markets are in bubbles and are ready to break. Bubbles do not burst when the risk is recognized as it is now. Everybody thought the Titanic was unsinkable. Further, the coming economic problems are not about economics. The government elite in the West ignored the political chaos of the next four years. They will now reap the economic chaos of the next four years. Thank you for listening to the Business Mirror Podcast. For a broader look on business, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Business Mirror. Until next time.